Karaganda is some 460 kilometers uh, to the northeast of Jezkazgan. In all, a dozen uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters, uh, three Antonov fixed-wing aircraft, and six all-terrain vehicles will be at the landing site. The weather forecast for landing calls for just a few clouds uh, at 5,000 and 25,000 feet. Uh, and uh, excellent uh, weather forecast for the return of Garin uh, Borisenko and uh, Samakutiaev in their Soyuz vehicle. The temperatures at landing time, which will be at uh, 10 a.m. Kazakhstan time on Friday morning, expected to be in the mid 60s Fahrenheit. Work on page 90. Copy that. On page 90. Preparation for descent. NASA personnel uh, who have joined uh, the Russian search and recovery forces in Kazakhstan for the recovery of the crew include uh, Kirk Shireman, the International Space Station Deputy Program Manager, Peggy Whitson, the Chief of the Astronaut Office here at the Johnson Space Center, NASA photographer Bill Ingalls uh, from NASA headquarters uh, in Washington, as well as uh, flight surgeon personnel, uh, soon to board the helicopters in Karaganda to join that team. Uh, Joel Montalbano, the director of human spaceflight programs in Russia, Josh Byerly, a NASA public affairs officer. Uh, they are all in Kazakhstan. Uh, Shireman, Whitson, Ingalls, and flight uh, surgeon personnel uh, helicoptered down to Jezkazgan to pre-stage uh, for the first phalanx of helicopters that will arrive at the landing site to be joined by additional helicopters to, uh, to be deployed uh, from Karaganda to the northeast of Jezkazgan. Earlier uh, today, uh, the Space Station Control Board met uh, under the direction of the station's program manager, Mike Suffordini. All of the international partners uh, were involved uh, in that uh, Space Station Control Board meeting. They heard an update on the uh, failure investigation uh, being conducted by the Russian State Commission uh, to the uh, activities uh, that have been involved uh, for the past several weeks in the wake of the uh, failure of the uh, unmanned Progress 44 resupply ship that launched uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome back on August 24th, but failed uh, to reach orbit uh, because of a failure in its third stage some five and a half minutes after its launch. Uh, that progress was lost, uh, causing uh, adjustments in the landing and launch schedules uh, for the uh, next uh, several uh, vehicles that will be arriving at the International Space Station and the launch of the next uh, residence of the station, Dan Burbank, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Anton Shkaplerov. The uh, official dates uh, that have now been targeted uh, include uh, the next launch of the, the next Progress resupply ship, the 45 Progress, uh, which is targeted now for launch uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on October 30th with a docking uh, to the International Space Station's Piers docking compartment on November 1st. That uh, will uh, validate uh, the uh, inspection and uh, analysis work that has been ongoing uh, regarding the Soyuz booster's third stage, the commonalities uh, between the Soyuz booster uh, for the Progress resupply vehicle and uh, for the manned space uh, vehicles are, are very similar, just a few differences in design. Uh, but uh, the uh, launching of that Progress vehicle on October 30th, uh, we'll provide uh, the confidence needed uh, to proceed uh, with the launch of the uh, Burbank, Ivanishin, and Shkaplerov crew on the Soyuz TMA-22 spacecraft. Uh, that uh, launch now targeted for November 14th with a docking uh, to the Poisk module of the International Space Station on November 16th. So for the next uh, 60 days or so, 
uh, Mike Fossum, the station commander, Sergei Volkov, and Satoshi Furukawa uh, will be a three-man crew on board the station conducting their activities and scientific research to be joined in mid-November by Burbank, Ivanishin, and Shikaplarov. The Fossum crew, Fossum, Volkov, and Furukawa, are now scheduled to land in their Soyuz spacecraft on the northern steppe of Kazakhstan, much closer to the uh, remote town of Arkalik on uh, November 22nd at uh, sunrise local time. That will leave Burbank, Ivanishin, and Shikaplarov uh, as a three-man crew for several weeks uh, thereafter until uh, the launching of uh, Don Pettit, along with uh, his two crewmates, uh, Andre Kuipers of the European Space Agency and that Soyuz commander, uh, Oleg Kononenko, who are scheduled to launch around the uh, Christmas time frame. A uh, firm launch date for Pettit, uh, Kuipers, and Kononenko has not been set. Uh, we expect that that will be set uh, within, the, within the next week or so. Uh, but again, they are targeted for a launch around the Christmas time frame to join uh, Burbank, Ivanishin, and Shikaplarov aboard the International Space Station. Houston, Space to Ground 1, no response required, just letting you know that Space to Ground 1 has been returned to the nominal configuration, so you should be able to hear it in the Russian segment. This is Mission Control Houston. You can see at the uh, flight director's console, uh, Courtney McMillan, the uh, flight director on console at this hour on the right side of your screen, joined by uh, Shannon Lucid, uh, the veteran uh, astronaut serving as CAPCOM or spacecraft communicator. And just at the very top of your screen is uh, Mike Fole, the former space station commander during Expedition 8, who's on hand uh, as a second set of eyes and an expert in Soyuz systems if required throughout the course of the night. Communication, uh, communication assets. Expedition 29 now officially underway on board the International Space Station. The transition beginning at the time of undocking okay. that occurred uh, just about 19 uh, minutes ago at uh, 7.38 uh, p.m. Central Time. After separation, uh, yes, I checked it. And also for Tarhans, we have a video. 
The uh, report uh, from uh, the search and recovery forces in Jezkazgan, uh, one of the staging areas for tonight's uh, recovery of the Expedition 28 crew, is that the weather is excellent, clear skies, light winds, uh, and that is expected to prevail through the time of the landing of the Soyuz vehicle just over three hours from now. Moscow Station, SG-1, how copy? Copy loud and clear, how us? Also, Sergey, copy loud and clear. So, step four on page 8-40 is complete. Okay, for, uh, we confirm, and thank you. And I'm also going to take a look at uh, closing the valves. Okay, copy. This view from cameras on the International Space Station as uh, the vehicle now under the command of Mike Fossum, the NASA Flight engineer for Expedition 28, now the commander of Expedition 29 for the next uh, two months. Space station uh, flying just to the east of the Hawaiian Islands, uh, from moving from northwest to southeast over the Pacific Ocean at an altitude of 228 statute miles. And you can see in this view as it darts uh, back and forth uh, amongst the clouds over the Pacific Ocean, uh, you can see the Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft as it uh, continues an opening rate from the International Space Station, eventually uh, to be at a position some 12 kilometers away from the station for the deorbit burn uh, that is scheduled two hours, four minutes from now. now or should I do it later? Stand by. Yes. You can go ahead and send it as we agreed per page 90. Okay, in work. Good view of the Soyuz TMA-21 vehicle. Alexander Samakutiaev at the controls and the descent module in the center seat, flanked on his left by Andrei Barosenka and on his right by NASA flight engineer Ron Garin. They are just uh, two hours, 57 minutes away from landing on the southern steppe of Kazakhstan. MCC Tarhane. Go ahead. 
Igor Ivanovich. Depot N2. Do I need to select that? Okay, no, it's cool. Stand by. Yes, select Depo M2. In work, selecting Depo M2, have selected it. As it maintains an opening rate uh, over the Pacific Ocean, uh, once again a good view of the Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft, its three occupants, uh, the departing Expedition 28 crew, which undocked uh, some 27 minutes ago over northern China, less than two hours away now from the time of the deorbit burn, which will be a four-minute, 20-second firing of the Soyuz engines to slow the uh, Soyuz vehicle down by 115 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit. Honed in uh, for a landing on the southern step of Kazakhstan, touchdown southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, scheduled two hours, 53 minutes from now. Here in the uh, mission control room, uh, the visiting vehicle officer reports uh, to Flight Director Courtney McMillan that um, all of the Soyuz systems are in excellent shape. And uh, during the Russian ground station pass, uh, the Russian flight uh, control team in Korolyov at their control center outside of Moscow uplinked uh, the deorbit and landing targets to the Soyuz computers. So everything is in order, everything going uh, by the book so far for the anticipated return of Ron Garin, Andrei Barasenka, and Alexander Samakutiaev less than three hours from now, a landing uh, on the southern step of Kazakhstan where the weather on this evening or Friday morning Kazakhstan time is excellent. Just a few clouds, temperatures expected to be in the mid-60s Fahrenheit to greet the three returning crew members.
the International Space Station and the uh, Soyuz TMA-21 vehicle that you see in this view from external cameras on the station have crossed the equator moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. They'll be passing into an orbital sunset uh, before long and we'll be going ratty on uh, our downlink television capability uh, through the KU band communication system. To recap, the um, six uh, crew members on board the station uh, said farewell to one another uh, almost four hours ago. Hatches were closed uh, between the Soyuz vehicle and the uh, Poisk module of the International Space Station's Russian segment at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. The uh, three crew members aboard the Soyuz, Alexander Samakutiaev, who is the Soyuz commander in the center seat of the descent module of the uh, Soyuz vehicle, Andrei Barosenka and Ron Garin, the NASA flight engineer, climbed into their Sokol launch and entry suits, performed leak checks, and um, at 7.38 p.m. Central Time, uh, they undocked from the Poisk module. Three minutes later, uh, the Soyuz uh, engines were fired in a separation burn for 15 seconds to increase the opening rate between the Soyuz and the station. That opening rate is continuing and will continue to a point at which the Soyuz will be 12 kilometers away from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn of 4 minutes and 20 seconds coming up in 1 hour 53 minutes. The deorbit burn uh, to be conducted at 10.05 p.m. Central Time to slow the Soyuz down, enable it to drop out of orbit for its uh, entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing on the southern steppe of Kazakhstan, southeast of Jezkazgan, at uh, 11 p.m. Central Time. Officially begun. We're ready for the evening DPC. And Expedition 29, this is Houston. We also are ready for the evening DPC and ready for Expedition 29. Thanks for the great day today. I just have two uh, quick things for you. Tomorrow's plan is on board and the no deltas to form 24. And Satoshi, whenever you're finished with T2, please just let us know when the display is powered down. That's all I have uh, for you all. Do you have anything for us? Uh, nope, nothing for Houston, Shannon. Thanks a bunch. We do have, uh, well, we have a video to get down. Uh, we got a, about eight or nine minutes of, of uh, video of them uh, backing away, and uh, I don't know how many camera cards we managed to put some photos on. Okay, sounds great. We'll uh, be ready to take, take it whenever you're ready to uh, send it down. Now, uh, Huntsville and Munich and uh, Scuba don't have anything for you tonight, but if you have anything, of course, they're there, and uh, you can stop by. Otherwise, we'll hand you over to Moscow. Okay, copy that. I do have a quick one for Huntsville. We still have some work to finish up, and I'll be with you after the DPC here to do that. And uh, Scuba and uh, Munich, thanks for your help today. And I'll turn it over to uh, Sergey. Moscow Station on SG2, the evening DPC. And uh, as you heard, the new space station commander, Mike Fossum, who actually took over command of the station from Andrei Barasenka on uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, conducting his uh, first uh, daily planning conference, or DPC, as it is known. Uh, these are conducted uh, after crew wake up and before crew sleep begins each day aboard the International Space Station, an opportunity uh, for the crew on board the station to tag up with the various control centers around the world. Uh, this uh, being the first one uh, that Mike Fossum is in uh, command of uh, as uh, commander of Expedition 29, which formally began with the undocking of the Soyuz vehicle from the International Space Station, that undocking again occurring uh, less than an hour ago. As uh, the space station moves into an orbital sunset, uh, the work uh, continues on board the station, and of course uh, the day not over by a long shot for the uh, Expedition 28 crew in the Soyuz uh, TMA. 21 vehicle with their deorbit burn one hour 50 minutes from now landing on the southern steppe of Kazakhstan planned two hours 44 minutes from now. Form 24 we have a tag up coming up at a specific time. Well, 
The only uh, time critical activity that I had was uh, was um, um, com reconfiguration and uh, you also uh, have your tag up with specialists at 225. But so with the uh, Soyuz TMA-21 backing away to a safe distance away from the International Space Station for its deorbit burn coming up uh, one hour 49 minutes from now at 10.05 uh, uh, p.m. Central Time, we will uh, wrap up this uh, portion of tonight's coverage and uh, a programming uh, reminder will be back on the air just an hour and 15 minutes from now at 9.30 p.m. Central Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time for deorbit and uh, landing coverage coverage through the time the crew is in the medical tent uh, at the landing site in Kazakhstan. Again, our landing coverage uh, resumes at 9.30 p.m. Central Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, until the crew is safely inside the medical tent in Kazakhstan. For now, uh, we'll bid you a good evening and we'll see you in about an hour and 15 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. This plane looks just as bad as some of the cars we've been in. Hi, I'm Vince. And I'm Larry. We're the crash test dummies for the National Highway Traffic Safety...